today I want to cover a topic that I get asked about a lot in my practice, and that's low testosterone in young women. So it's something that I'm seeing a lot of. Um, as we're running labs, testosterone's coming back way lower than we expect. So the reference range in women is about 8 to 48, and I'm seeing women in their 30s with a testosterone of 3. And so the question becomes, why? right? What are the factors that are affecting this? Because when it comes to testosterone replacement therapy in younger women, it really depends on your goals in life and where you are in life, depends on kind of what treatment strategies we might choose with testosterone. So first of all, why are these women coming into my office to get their hormones run? Well, normally this is coming through with, with metabolic dysfunction. Normally it's metabolic dysfunction, so inability to lose weight, um, despite you know doing the things that we should be doing, and then um, low energy and low libido are kind of the most common symptoms that people notice. Other things that people may notice with low testosterone are things like an inability to recover from workouts the way that you used to, or an inability to um, gain muscle mass that's in proportion to the amount of exercise and lifting and things like that that we're doing. So when we think about testosterone, right, I think that it's a complicated topic because you don't necessarily just want to throw hormones directly at a young woman um, because your body should be producing them. So the question is why, right? What factors do we need to consider when it comes to testosterone production? So there's a couple things to think about. Um, if your testosterone is low as a female, right, and you are trying to work to get that testosterone up, there's a few lifestyle things that we should consider. So first of all, one of the things to think about is sleep. So sleep is vital for normal testosterone production. Um, LH is what spikes and causes the theca cells in the ovary to create testosterone, okay? Um, LH actually rises the most in the deep cycles of sleep. So in women who don't sleep, um, you can expect testosterone to lower. And they've actually done some research studies um, in men where they sleep deprived them, which I put in quotations because what they did was they did a week of five hours of sleep and they noticed a pretty dramatic decrease in men's daily testo uh, daytime testosterone levels. So it's interesting, right? Because five hours of sleep for a week who on earth hasn't done that, right? So um, that just goes to show you how important sleep is. So if you are experiencing low testosterone, sleep's gonna be one of the number one things that we wanna think about in terms of getting things back on track, right? The other thing that people don't necessarily think about is the mitochondria. So mitochondria is the powerhouse of your cells. And it is actually where all steroid hormone, all sex hormone production starts. And it's something people don't think about. So the very first step of hormone production is actually for cholesterol to be taken from outside the mitochondria in through something called the star protein into the mitochondria, and then it's converted into pregnenolone. Okay, then pregnenolone goes out into the endop endoplasmic reticulum and is then converted into your other hormones. So what this means is that mitochondrial health is vital for hormone production. It's vital for testosterone production. And our mitochondria are pretty sensitive. Um, a lot of people don't think about this, but our mitochondria are super sensitive to things like toxins, right? So what's in our environment? Um, things like inflammation and infection. So when we're looking at that, that is also a good place to start. So how do we support our mitochondria? Well, toxin, uh, reducing toxin exposure is going to be a really good place to start. And uh, being in the aesthetics world, um, I usually am a little biased towards starting with your personal care products. The majority of women, right, put on about 30 personal care products from the time that they leave their house in the morning to the time they, or from, sorry, from the time they get up to the time they leave their house. That's insane. That's a lot. And uh, things like all of our parabens and phthalates and all of the stuff that's in our personal care products we have control of. So picking a, a really great brand, especially for skincare, like a really great medical grade brand that doesn't have that stuff in it is really, really important. That's something that's in our control. Um, things like avoiding using perfumes or anything with fragrance in it. So fragrance is uh, basically like code word for phthalate. Um, and then we want to we want to do things like um, filter our water. So one of the filters that's my favorite. Uh, it's a little gaudy, but 
in terms of kind of the aesthetic look of your house, but it's awesome, is the Berkey water filters. Um, they filter out every day and they last forever. And um, that is a really key component in making sure that we're healthy enough and that we're reducing our toxin exposure. Um, other things that we want to think about would be at home products like cleaning products and uh, dryer sheets are actually like the number one most toxic thing that you probably have in your house. So that's a really good place to start. And then in terms of nutrition, our mitochondria really like antioxidants and they like certain nutrients, right? Like everything, they need, they need certain nutrients. So things like vitamin C, NAC, alpha lipoic acid, um, magnesium, and copper. All of these things are super necessary for uh, normal mitochondrial function. And it's probably something that hasn't been discussed um, when you're going to your hormone, uh, hormone replacement doctor, because oftentimes they're very quick to just be like, go on your hormones. Um, so those are definitely some lifestyle factors that we want to consider. Another key component of this that I mentioned is that cholesterol is actually the building block to pregnenolone, right? So we, we convert cholesterol into pregnenolone. What this means is that if you don't have enough healthy fats in your diet, um, you will not make sex hormones because you don't have the building blocks. Your body can't make something from nothing. So um, getting in healthy fats is really important. Um, and then reducing stress. So pregnenolone, right, is converted when you're thinking about your sex hormone status. Pregnenolone is converted on one side into DHEA, and then testosterone, right, which is what we're talking about, and on the other side into progesterone. Um, but there's this thing called the pregnenolone shunt or pregnenolone steal, right, which is where if you're under high amounts of stress, your body will steal your pregnenolone and preferentially make cortisol, your stress hormone. So basically, it bypasses all the other things and makes preferentially cortisol. That's one of the reasons why stress is the number one reason why a woman doesn't ovulate. Okay? It's also going to greatly affect your testosterone production. So that's something to think about. The other thing that you want to think about is lifting. So we know that lean muscle mass builds testosterone and um, that that is a really great way to raise our testosterone. Is it going to be overnight? No, but, um, but it is something to, to think about um, and it is an important part of that. The other nutrient to think about is zinc. So you have to have zinc to make healthy testosterone levels. And these are things that are not discussed with women. So I would start in a young woman, if you have uh, low testosterone, those are the things that you wanna look at lifestyle wise. The other thing that we wanna think about with low testosterone and is a good question if you're particularly very young and have low testosterone is oral estrogen use. Okay, so think about an oral birth control pill that has estrogen. Any oral estrogen use will raise something called sex hormone binding globulin, okay? And we know that oral estrogen use in oral birth control is gonna lower testosterone. So it lowers testosterone, but also raises something called sex hormone binding globulin. Sex hormone binding globulin, what it does is it takes testosterone, it binds it up, and it puts it basically into storage, for lack of a better term. Um, so you have bound testosterone, and then you have free testosterone. And free testosterone is free and available and ready to do the work. And so that can be a big reason why women have testosterone symptoms and are younger is because oftentimes they've been on oral estrogen for years. And so um, that is also something to look at. And I would recommend if you're getting your testosterone run as a young woman, that you are getting both total and free testosterone and that you're getting sex hormone binding globulin run. Um, and when it comes to treatment, I would go back to some of the lifestyle things and really think about the things that we could do differently to raise the testosterone up um, and support your body to do it, especially if you are younger. So that is kind of the 411 on testosterone production in young women. You can drop a comment below if you have any questions.